Hello everybody, Reggie Time here with this week's vlog. There isn't much to review, so we're just going to talk briefly about the week and why I didn't get much volume in. And then we're going to um, have like a 45 minute live play section to, to just kind of pad out the content, if you will. So first of all, this week, nuts and bolts of it, I made about £100, which is pretty nice considering I only played whatever it was, two, four, six, nine, ten. 11 and a half, 12 and maybe 12 and a half hours. The reason I only played 12 and a half hours this week was um, on Monday through Thursday, I did 40 plus hours in work. Um, <coughs> excuse me a moment while I clear. I did 40 hours in work. So that was a um, big part of my week. Uh, coming home from work, I was trying to play, but I was a bit tired, trying to get like a couple of sessions. But as you can see, the hours I was putting in, they weren't very long because I was just tired. Um, I came home on Thursday, which is like the end of my working week, and I felt fucking terrible. Um, I went into work feeling fine, nothing wrong with me. Then around 7 o'clock, it was weird. I just started feeling all like a bit queasy and what have you. don't know what it was. Um, we decided to take the guys that were supporting out for a drive. There's two guys that are wheelchair bound. So we went out um we secured them in the van, secured the wheelchairs in the van. So obviously it's um, so the, the, the chairs don't slide around. And I was out in the cold and the cold just literally, I mean, I don't feel the cold. I'm a fat lad. I don't really feel the cold that much, but it fucking just went through me like, like, a, like just like a fucking sheet of ice. It was horrible. It was really cold. It took me like 15, 20 minutes to get warm um, again. And then the same when we got back to the house we were getting the guys back off the van again it takes around five minutes and the cold just fucking battered through me again and i went in had a cup of tea took me another 20 minutes to get warm and then driving home i got freezing cold again and i just came in the house and said to the wife i'm sorry love i'm really poorly can't talk um i just felt fucking rotten i was like Icy, icy cold. Went upstairs, kept most of my clothes on, put my dressing gown over the top and got under two quilts in bed and slept for something like 12 hours. I was awake now and again through the night, um, but pretty much just slept solidly for 12 hours and just felt rough. Fuck knows what it was. Didn't feel too great on the Friday, but by Friday evening, I'd kind of perked up a little bit, but I don't know what the fuck it was, but by Christ, I didn't feel well. Um, then Saturday, sadly, one of my oldest friends, his mum passed away, so I didn't. Spent some time with him Saturday, didn't have much chance to play, which, you know, there's more important things than poker, and certainly one of your best friends losing their mum is um, is, is kind of way more important to go and spend time with him than it is to, to, to not to play poker. And then on Sunday, um, spent time with family, because I hadn't seen them much through the week, um, went and visited a few friends, another friend has um, just had a new baby, so I went to see him, went to see my sister-in-law's stepdaughter to do some like she wanted to like do something for her um she's studying politics at university so she wanted to talk to me a little bit about that she's got to interview so many people for a project i was one of them so basically they didn't play much yesterday either so yeah it's been a pretty damn slow week um in poker said but it happens and i'm not a professional poker player so it doesn't matter so yeah we only played what 13 hours we made a hundred pounds, so it's pretty good. What I have done to the spreadsheet, you'll notice there's a gap there, and there's some gaps further up. I've removed all the pot limit home half from it because I just went to like reflect my no limit hourly, and I've also removed Unibet because it went to be like my sky hourly. It hasn't really changed very much, to be honest with you. Um, <clears throat> but this is now just purely my no limit hold on profits. And as from this Friday, this whatever the session was on Friday, was it this one? And that was Friday, I think. Um, I've started because I mix tournaments and to, uh, sorry tournaments and cash games occasionally. I uh, I've just started adding like my tournament victories to to this, if you will. And my tournament losses too from here on inwards. So I'm not sure how that's going to affect my hourly. Um, I know Sharpscope records these things, but I'm just basically just capturing the, like the fluctuations, the, the ups and downs of how we go, and my overall hourly rate of poker. <coughs> really do excuse me obviously we're not going to be able to separate the mtt hourly from the cash hourly etc but it's going to give me my overall poker hourly rate we had some tournament success earlier in the year which isn't been reflected in this so it's again it's not 100 percent accurate but it's fucking close enough um so yeah that's the week really that's there's not much else to say there's not that many hands to go over we only played 12 hours most of the big pots were just kind of cooler type situations um 
which has led me on to making the video that's about to follow um which we're going to be talking about playing like trying to play a really exploitative style when we get ourselves in like really good games against some weak players who aren't capable of exploiting us it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea the next part of the video because we're not going to be talking about being balanced we're not going to be talking about protecting our range we're not going to be talking about like betting to deny equity all of those things are going to be like completely off the table and we're going to be talking about playing an incredibly exploitable style against fish and if you're a guy who plays fast forward poker the next part probably isn't for you if you're the sort of person who gets angry quite easily when people give what you think is bad poker advice again it's not for you it's not advice that we're, going to, we're not going to be talking about things it's going to be i'm advocating using in games that are in any way tough or like reg infested it's it's purely talking about how to play um in games where there's lots and lots of fish so yeah um hope you enjoy it some of you won't some of you will get really annoyed by it some of you other guys might be thinking you know what if i'm playing against all these fish maybe it's something i can at least think about introducing to my game it's not for everyone it's it's a style that kind of suits my overall i don't know it just, it just feels natural to me and um, there's definitely leaks in it there's definitely exploits in it but um if we as we'll talk about in the video if we're putting ourselves in games where most of the players at the table aren't capable of spotting the leaks and then subsequently figuring out how to exploit it then it really isn't a big problem whatsoever so anyways let me know what you think um and yeah i hope you enjoy it so here we are with the live play section of this week's vlog we have 20 nil 30 nil 20 nil 30 nil tables this might change during the course of the session depending on how long how long we go for i'm probably only thinking of recording around 45 minutes but we'll see i'll be playing as long as the as the tables run but for the purposes of the video it might not be such it might only be like a 30 45 minute recording depending on how much decent content we get in that time we're going to be looking for opportunities to explain um more about when i feel it's appropriate to go for delay and see bets to so just give up um trying to just like checking much more of our range when we're out of position both as the pre-flop raiser and as the caller and just generally trying to play a style which affords us the opportunity to keep pots small when we'd rather pots were kept small and um, bloat pots when we'd rather pots were bloated without really like just giving up too often if you will especially when we're in position and that's kind of what delayed c betting allows us to do it allows us to check back a lot more flops where um especially against like calling stations or like loose players pre-flop who can have hit the board in a variety of ways that you just don't see coming and then then it allows us to maybe fire more double barrel turn river bluffs in position and just maybe just give up a little bit more out of position it's no fun being out of position to call in stations um you know we miss the flop 70 percent of the time playing no limit holding when we don't already have a pair and that can be super frustrating in games where you're playing against a lot of guys who just call really wide ranges pre-flop so um yeah hopefully we can get into some spots to discuss when's a good time to do these things and when not to i think on this board here we just need to keep betting that's like very draw heavy it's not very likely to have a seven given we've got one but we want to charge draws we want to charge 10. we kind of got the board crushed in terms of like him being able to call us with worse made hands but there's certainly some draws there they can call with so yeah just to recap we're going to be just playing our normal ranges maybe th that we play in these games which is going to be a little bit looser than i would play in in um like games that were more reg heavy so we're going to be trying to play a few more speculative hands and um, that's going to lead us to being in spots sometimes where we're out of position versus calling stations and, and what have you and then um, there's been some talk on my facebook group this week about um let me just play these queens and check back the flop I think it's a very easy check back and be calling a turn if you bet maybe raising versus that size and be just calling without open ender here on table three i 
Mm. Kind of big here. We're getting a good enough price for the pair in a draw. We're going to be giving up nearly all rivers though. We're going to be like leading out twice now here on table two. No, we're not going to be leading out just once. We're going to check the six down here. Not that likely it's good, but even less likely that he falls a better hand if we bet. So, um, here's the ace jack. We're going to over limp the 10 7 suited. We're going to check our king queen in line with our checking flops out of position a little bit more. Quads is capable of putting quite a bit of pressure on here, but I mean, king queen is just going to be way too strong. Three is a pretty shit hot river for us. Given he didn't three bet pre flop, it's not likely he's got ace king. If I'm losing here, we're probably losing to just pocket fours or maybe pocket nines. It's like it's clearly it's a super easy call. And he just has queen 10, which obviously, if we hadn't been checking flops, he wouldn't have had the luxury of doing. And looks like we've got off to the races with the ace king, or we hope we're off to the races with the ace king. <laughs> We are off to the races with a significant head start. No queen. Happy days. Happy days. I've lost what my train of thought now, what I was going to talk about earlier, because we just got bits and pieces of action all over the place. But yeah, going back to that, the checking out of position there. Um, we're going to be checking a lot of our range out of position. It's something I've picked up from playing PLO much as from Jay Nandes videos it's not necessarily the same in Hold'em and um, we probably don't want to be checking as much as I'm going to be checking a lot of the time if we're playing against regulars you can put us in lots of problems Um, but I think it's it's okay to do it's not very often we have a three street hand in No Limit Hold'em and most of the time we just don't we don't have anything and then other times when we do have a value hand it's very rare we have a hand and we want to really be betting three streets kind of our super primo value hands and like our super strong semi buffs are about the only ones we're ever going to be wanting to, to do too a lot of three street betting and i'm pretty comfortable um personally like checking and calling some bets allowing people some rope to hang themselves i know it's not a style a lot of people like um it's not a style i like playing on speed poker because you know, these get those games are pretty weak type pre flop. People are happy checking back a lot too, etc. But in these games, I mean the fish are willing to stab a lot, fish are willing to give you free cards a lot. Um I know that them two sound like they contradict each other, but um and they guess they do to an extent. But I think you just what I guess I'm trying to say is you just don't get like particularly punished for taking some somewhat passive lines. I'm going to raise our aces here on this board texture. I'm going to check here because Slalom loves to take a stab with our ace king. He absolutely loves a good stab to Slalom. So we're going to let him do it. And if he's got the cure for ace king, well then, good luck, for, good luck to him. Slalom could easily have the cure for ace king here, by the way. He could have any two fucking cards, but... He does like to be aggressive when you land. The four's not ideal. I mean, not sure what deuces he can have, but yeah. And again, just checking to slalom there allowed him to. If we can find out what he had very quickly. Well, he had an ace, so we probably would have won the same amount of money either way around. But it does allow him to, to keep his range a lot wider, so we can um, profitably call really well. Right, what we're we doing here too many regulars at this table now we're going to quit this table up here this 13 on table one two three regulars and um, one unknown fish and one fish with not much money and don't play with man no we'll sit at it still we'll sit at it still um just for the purposes of the video but i'd be looking usually to just quit this i'd rather play three these three tables with more focus than play this fourth one usually with the regulars but they're all just orange regulars so hopefully they won't be um won't be giving us too much aggravation three bet a little bit bigger than usual but to ten blind rather than nine given that i bought a green tag and get cold call behind which is not unpleasant and we top flop top set which is 
clearly nice and no reason to see that here when we've got the board absolutely crushed we have the back door hearts covered give our opponent a chance to stab should he want to he doesn't um we limped we over limped the queen eight suit when he makes it that big we're just gonna let it go no big deal here we would have bet enough so we couldn't just jam the river without it being an over bet and we fill up and he folds so that doing a lot of betting again that's a really shite turn card it's a pretty rubbish turn card I have no intention of calling 15 pounds off here in this situation with what is now just effectively second pair so I'm going to let Slalom have this one yes yeah, so what we do by checking more flops is we are we like we cap our range sometimes when we're not capped which is nice against regulars because they will sometimes make some mistakes against us um it also allows like some bad players or some weaker players to start betting hands that they that wouldn't call a bet which is nice um and it just allows us to keep pots small when we want to keep pots small too or gives us the opportunity to keep pots small when we want to keep pots small um and that's kind of the the goal when you're playing against bad players i mean imagine you're in the casino um then you're playing against a bunch of like bad calling station players you wouldn't try and play an online style against them so when you play an online poker particularly on sky or on global or on natural light whatever it is you play and you've got games that are like recreating what a good live game would play like why would you not like try and play a a really super exploitable style that you would try and play in a live game um it makes no sense to to try and like play a tight aggressive fast fold style game of poker against players that are going to let you get away with theoretically playing much worse poker but in like an in a really exploitable sense just allowing yourself to minimize your losses and hopefully maximize your profits kind of like really old school style that i love being able to to, to produce when i'm in the right games problem is sometimes it can carry over too far in and then there are some regulars might start re-exploiting you and then you can get into all these kind of like silly little pissing contests which i try and avoid like the fucking plague which is why i don't like playing with lots of regulars if i want to play lots of regulars i'll fuck off and play on a site where i can get more hands per hour in to hopefully negate my lower hourly due to my reduced win rate but yeah in these games i'm happy to play like super exploitably um safe in the knowledge that most players are exploiting me it gets more frustrating sometimes because in multi-way pots you know you you tend to end up needing the nuts a lot more often or close to the nuts um you need to like just have the best hand at showdown far more often but um there's, there's upsides and downsides to that and we're just gonna call here he can have a nine sometimes i guess or he could have king queen and I'll stab here with my flush draw on table three we make our flush we're going to hope he's got an ace win check raised here by bcc it makes me very very nervous just gonna call and see a turn it goes all in you know these fucking players they just in my opinion they don't have enough bluffs here to justify just calling it off um they're just not good enough to like do that with like just draws it often enough in my opinion to to make it worthwhile just like stacking off for 
best part of 25 quid there he's probably just flopped a set and what have you you know and if he's bluffing me then he's bluffing me it's not my it's, it's not my style it's not in my interest it's not how i want to play to like just get a fucking shit ton of money in with one pair don't need to do it it's, we just don't need to do it yeah, do i occasionally get bluffed off the best hand quite possibly do I care too much about it? Well, no, because most of the time, I mean, I don't know very much about BCC. He might be a very good player. He might be capable of having some bluffs there, or lots of bluffs there. Um, but by and large, he's just going to show me a hand that's beating two aces at that point, and you know, I'm happy to just sometimes get outplayed, I guess. <laughs> Against these two stack sizes, we're pretty much committed. Once we bet here, so we may as well make a large bet. And if they've got the queue for two kings, then more power to them. He doesn't have the queue for two kings yet, and he doesn't have the queue for three kings on the river. We picked up a flush draw here to go with our open ender. We're going to put a small raise in to try and get rid of BCC and give ourselves some more river options. Assuming he doesn't three bears. I'm going to check back this river if we get the chance. It gives us some, we've obviously got a showdown value now. It seems a bit thin for value. And we lose the flush. So yeah, I mean, any regulars watching these, watching this and, and listening to what I've been talking about, the, some of them will be literally tearing the hair out because they'll be seeing spots. Oh, you should have seen bet there. Deny this and do that and and what. And, and there's nothing wrong with with that style. Um, I've used it myself many times, and I'll probably at some point when my confidence goes, or I feel like I need to change my game up. I'll probably go back to doing it again. That's it's almost undeniable. Um, oh fuck! I keep losing my train of thought this morning. But I do believe that if you're in like super soft games, it is absolutely the best strategy uh, to just try and keep pots small wherever possible and just look to bloat them when, when you have a big hand. That's kind of the whole point of playing against fish. The whole point of like finding soft games and trying to play against fish is that they will allow you to play pretty that very much imperfectly, but still pay you off when you when you like, make a strong hand and give you lots of free cards when, when you'd like free cards. That's kind of why we find ourselves soft games. We find ourselves soft games to allow ourselves <coughs> to play so optimally, um, very exploitably, and still make a lot of money. Oh, a lot of money in terms of like win rate. It's not perfect poker, it's not balanced, it's it's not anything. But it, it just it's, in my opinion, it's the best strategy for beating soft games. We can value better our AC run the river just very small. We have the nuts against slalom. And it's gonna call. We get raised by dog. And now we're just going to go all in and chop with dope. That's pretty much what's going to happen here, I think. We're going to go all in and we're going to chop. Just hope it's not free rolling clubs. Maybe he was bluffing. Uh -huh, he was bluffing. Oh no. Folded the smaller straight. Good fold, sir. If indeed he did fold the smaller straight, which I've no reason to dispute it. I don't really know too much about him. He seems to keep himself to himself a lot, which is. Which is, um. I don't know what it is, but it's, you know. I've no reason to think he's a liar. No reason to think he's a dick. It just seems like a. Regular grinder.
I think keeping the pot small is kind of it's a lost art in in no limit hold on these days uh, in terms of keeping the pot small and checking made hands um it seems to me like how the games are played now is like especially like speed poker games I haven't played very much lately um I probably should reply to that but I can't think what to say at the moment because I'm multitasking and I've lost my train of thought again and um, yet yeah, it seems like people either want to play like fucking mega big pots or mega small pots and, and nothing in between it's so the that's why the like the average pots are so small in in like the speed poker games because people is giving up so easily but like completely giving up or like playing massive pots so like no one seems to want to trap and slow up anymore nobody seems to want to like give their opponent the opportunity to bluff if, for example if, if most regulars if they got top pair out of position they're just automatically betting with it usually making their opponents fold not really giving people much chance to bluff and i guess what what i'm the style i'm describing here and the style i've been like adopting a bit lately we're taking chances with our equity we're giving people chance to like suck out on our marginal hands and things we're not doing great at protecting our marginal hands but i'm not cared about protecting our marginal hands too much if it's making me like blow up pots with marginal hands um I'm, I'm happy to take a slight risk with them and and allow my opponents plenty of scope to bluff that's kind of what i'm doing and you take some chances like phil galfond used to do it a lot years ago he was very happy taking like check call lines um with with hands that other guys would be like betting most of the time and um it it does get it can be frustrating um, especially when you're checking to players they're not betting and then you they just get there on the turn and you think oh I can just to bet my hand and I'm going to call one C versus slalom and probably give up I'm worried this guy's going to jam and just like close me out of the hand but let me see how aggressive slalom's been so far pulling second pair to him seems bonkers but now this rose is min raised and the game is open. Yes, Alan was just bluffing. Yeah, I guess what I'm saying is I'm, I'm happy being a bit more trappy. It's it's just my like poker nature, if you will. Um, I mean, I can force myself to play other ways. I don't enjoy it as much. I'm happy. I'm I'm pretty old school in the way I play. I understand that the, the modern concepts. I've studied them. I've used them don't enjoy the game as much when I'm being forced to use them because it just feels like it, it takes me out of my comfort zone sometimes it takes me out of what is natural what feels natural to me so I guess like if you can if you're natural style if you can play your natural style you understand how it makes your opponents react and you're also putting yourself in games where you're not necessarily exploited for some of the weaknesses of your natural style it's not a terrible thing in my opinion we are going to get rid of this table here now though two regulars and just like one fish so we're going to just lose that table for now and we'll try and find another one to go into it because that just the, the two regs one fish or three regs one fish ratio just isn't a table set up that i'm in any way willing to participate in we've got one here we can quickly jump into nope we don't Maybe we just soldier one. I think we can find a ten in our game. Maybe that's running. Doesn't really matter what the stakes are. What does matter is that we just keep the keep the content flowing, so we can get rid of that. Uh, I'm gonna fold this with don't to act behind us against slalom. Bring the table in. So the stakes don't matter it's just it's just about giving content to what's been a short vlog again we're going to get rid of table two now for the same reasons we just got rid of the other table no. slalom in the band off that stack size i think six eight is no longer a profitable open under the gun deep stack versus him he is he's going to make a lot of mistakes deep stack but the mistakes he's making off that stack size I think it just makes 
eight six probably still a pro slightly profitable open but not a, not like a super profit not like a super profitable one defend that three five versus the min race by the way if you if you are min racing the small blind stop it just three exit see lots of people doing it these days and i just think it's rubbish you got a pair in a good shot now let's check down at three hope it's good and it is so that table's going now so we'll look in the 20 nil section there isn't a game 30 nil there isn't a game so we'll look in the 10 nil section in just a moment and we'll time out at the same time mm. well it's a game not much of a game there's not much money on the table oh now the telephone's ringing that can be ignored for a moment we'll deal with that when we finish recording now if that was my mum she will ring the mobile in a minute and I'll answer her if it was some spam caller then never mind we'll troll them another day and again this is where we could check back the queens on this board because we don't really have a three street hand and then just hope to get two two value bets in and if we don't and our opponents are like frequently they're just like checking flops and check folding turns it's just going to encourage us to then be able to turn one of our complete air into bluffs on turn numbers too if jeffers regularly like stabs sorry not regularly if he regularly just like checks checks folds we can then when he does start stabbing turns based start checks we can make some disciplined folds against him and I mean, we're playing exploitably, but if he's playing more exploitably, then that's all good. Um, if Jeffers that, if Jeffers was the type of player who would like always stab turns versus our checkbacks, well then we can adjust to that too. I think against bad players or against like, yeah, I don't know the way of putting it. Against bad players, if you're playing exploitably, but you adjust to them quicker than they adjust to you that's going to get you the money quicker than trying to play like a balanced unexploit unexploitable style against them almost unquestionably um especially on a site like sky where i mean some of the players are capable of making some utterly horrendous mistakes i'm happy to make some small mistakes in small pots um as long as my opponents are going to be making some big mistakes in big pots and again, is that in line with 2018, like, popular poker, th poker thinking? Absolutely not. But these games aren't traditional 2018 poker games. They're very much, I mean, you can get in games on Sky that play like 2000, like it was 2005, 2004. So if you can play in games that, where that's the, that the level of play and the level of thinking of the opponents, you don't need to play a 2018 style against them. You can just play a style that, that crushed in 2005, uh, which was very much just like pretty passive, wait for the nuts value bet and only bluff when you're like pretty sure your opponent's weak, that type of thing. Um, if you can get in, oh, table's just fucking broke, which is a bit of a cunt, but another one immediately ready to come and take its place yeah you only need to play as good as you need to play to beat the game you're in i guess is what i'm saying is this going to like develop you as a player like so that you go on and beat like, higher stakes games well no not if you intend to go and play higher stakes games against good players of course it's not but um 
if you want to use that online as a training ground for going and playing live at the casino then yeah absolutely you can play in my opinion you can play this style in the casino up to in the games i've seen in the uk up to like a at least a one pound two pound level i haven't played higher than that so i couldn't comment on higher games but i'm sure there's like five pound big blind games in the uk that are like super fishy where you can play like a super exploitable style and and what have you um you just need if you're game selecting correctly you can get away with playing some pretty damn exploitable poker that saves you a ton of money against the rake um saves you a ton of fucking headaches against calling stations but doesn't affect your profitability at all do i want to risk 30 big blinds with ace jack off suit nope don't think i do don't think that i do so you don't try an explain an exploitable style in your speed poker games um because you will get your ass handed to you your red line will drop off the fucking planet you'll find yourself still struggling to get value because these guys will have hoods and you know they'll just be less prone to paying you off um and what have you so it won't work it just won't work this this is the sort of style you want to play in on sky on naturally on global poker or anytime you're playing on another site poker stars party poker where you've got you know two or three genuine fish at your table it's only a style you want to use against bad players it's not a style you want to try and use against good players because good players will, will catch on really quick and they will just ruthlessly exploit you they'll put you in all kinds of horrible situations where when you're checking a lot and you'll just find yourself like really struggling to get value so don't do it in those games this is only something we do in soft games where we don't get punished for it you'll get away with this all day every day in your kitchen table home games assuming that you don't have Ike Caxton and Stephen Chidwick playing in your home games of course a three bit small here just to isolate the shaman and check here to allow Slalom to do his thing. check again he's a slalom see if we can get him to pot it on the river Shireman with the bet, min three bet. We just have the over pair. Not min three bet, small three bet. We're going to let it go. Check raise on this, probably just like a pretty weak draw. Trivial fold. We kind of haven't been in trouble in this video at all. We've we've folded a couple of over pairs and I've been I've been confident in both of them. And even if I'm wrong, it's <clears throat> in my opinion it just isn't the end of the world. It's not hard to pick up chips in these games. We don't have to get involved in like tons and tons of battles. Um, and obviously if someone's like getting super out of line then you need to start defending wide but I want to be very confident they're getting super like Slalom for example 
we won't be folding over pairs versus slalom but when regulars are check raising or when players are taking like bet three bet lines we have no reason to think why they're aggressive like with the aces earlier we got check raising a three bet pot that might have been a bad fault he might have been check raising jacks or queens or something there but i'm just not overly fussed by that because there's like plenty of easy chips to pick up and usually when you get in those battles people have two pair but two pair are better <clears throat> so if typically the population has a in this creates a situation or if we get in a situation where the popular typically the population typically has two pairs or better then why would i want to go to war with with a one pair hand I'm willing to just like jam here versus this we're going to be behind to a lot to like jack x and things we have two overs and a straight draw he only has 50 blinds let's go i guess he has us crushed we do not get there <clears throat> so this guy lc aj oh dong big jack 10 x which is fair enough That hand does kind of go against everything we've talked about so far in this video, but given that he like bet two dollars, whatever, two pounds, whatever, and he only had seven pounds behind, it's not a situation where we can call and talk to him pre one turns. If, if I'm going to continue in the pot, there, I want to see both turn and river. I don't want to be calling and then fold him to a jam on the turn when they don't improve because he just denies us way too much of our equity. So give me two overs and open ender against a fish with less than 50 black with just like 50 blinds in the stack and prepared to gamble there you know you're going to be taking the worst of it when he calls but he's going to have some bet folds there sometimes sometimes you're going to get the full equity when he's just got something random like he's unfortunate he had the king there and sorry the jack because he took away our queen that's what if he has the 10 then um then we have our full whatever 15 out so is it no eight straight out six we have our full 14 out which is obviously fine to flip over dead money we've got 14 outs i'm happy to just get it in and fight over what's in the middle already i'd rather not be in those situations I'd rather he checked and allowed us a chance to check back and maybe bet some turns and things but he didn't he kind of forced us into like an all in all fold situation and it was just a situation where i think all in makes more money than like i think it's plus ev to just jam there whereas folding is obviously neutral ev i think it's plus ev to jam so there we go not depending the nine eight suited out of the small blind So we're probably gonna go for till 45 minutes then or oh, 45 minutes of live play action i haven't actually recorded the first part of the the video yet so i'm not sure how long the video is going to be but i'm expecting the first part to be like no longer than five minutes because of my lack of volume last week lack of activity died <clears throat> fortunately we are well prepared and we have another battery on hand <coughs> excuse me
Oh, flop check there against Abo manages to get two streets of value from pocket deuces that would almost certainly used to fold it had we bet the flop. So, more kudos to the delayed C bet line. <clears throat> Just gonna call this 40 pence here with our good shot. Call here with the good shot, back door flush draw two. Call here again. Race here now with the straight and the flush draw. <clears throat> and we're going to give up with the 10 jack. He is tempting to raise, but it looks like he's got a queen, and I don't trust these guys to fold. Min race in the button. Fruity. He's going to jam. He's going to call. We're going to just lose 70 pence. That's my prediction here. Oh, he didn't. Now we're just going to lose 70 pence in a different way. Sorry, lose 50. Not oh, 70 pence, wasn't it? <coughs> now we're just going to lose 70 pence by check folding to his C bet. <clears throat> That's a shit rivet. I guess we can just go all in and hope he's not the king and not the flush. A lot of players will just lead the flush there in the river when they make it after bet calling the turn. He just sat down and posted and only min raised. I mean, he might not have sat and posted, I'm not sure, but <coughs> either way. <coughs> Once slalom's in for the min raise, I am too. Action on table two. Kings versus Queens. Pretty standard no limit cooler there.
this is the downside of the checking probably should have bet that there to be fair in a multi-way pot and the queen's coming it's kind of can be get a bit awkward maybe but i'll just continue checking just for the purposes of the video that probably should have been a situation where i deviated from it to be fair not a big fan of calling three bets out of position with seven nine suited but we do have position on the fish so we're going to speculate a little here and clearly it's a dreadful board for us and folding is the natural conclusion so there we go we've got to 45 minutes of live play hopefully it's given you guys something to think about i'm aware that i've opened myself up to some criticism um given that what i've been advocating is completely non-standard in 2018 but just remember that i am seeing we're only doing it in games where we feel we're not going to be exploited for it so um yeah don't get carried away and start doing it in your games if you want to rant at me please feel free um if you want to say that oh this guy's so fucking terrible advising giving sh shit advice and um, because it is it's non-standard i get it but um in these games it will absolutely work and it's probably going to give you some opportunities to allow your opponent to bluff it's going to give you opportunities to remain calm because so many people are talked to they get so frustrated when their c-bets just aren't working they're out of position the c-betting they're missing they're giving up and they're just getting confused and end up running all kinds of spectacularly like terrible bluffs and things um hopefully it's giving you guys something else to think about try it i mean if you don't like it go back to doing what you're doing but um yeah i think it's it's very merit worthy in in bad games and something that some of you guys can think about we're playing on some of the softer sites and and game selecting well but we'll leave it there hope you all have a good week and we'll see you soon bye bye for now